Over 800,000 highway bridges have been erected in China, and over 10,000 km of high-speed rail bridges have been already constructed there. Bridges are yet another new indicator of how quickly Chinese construction is progressing. According to Zhao Wei, the chief engineer from the Ministry of Transport, there were 805,300 highway bridges in China at the end of 2016. Six suspension bridges with the top 10 main spans are currently located in China, as are more than half of the top 10 major cable state bridges in the world. Aside from that, China also finished building a number of well-known arch and girder bridges. You know, even the longest sea crossing bridge is in China. I think China is building bridges to break all the previous records. Don't you think so? Have you ever wondered how is this even possible? Subscribe to your channel for more exciting videos. Don't forget to turn on the post notification. The Qixi Bridge is one of the many magnificent bridges that have recently been built throughout the nation. Chinese leaders applaud them as evidence that their infrastructure development capabilities are greater than those of any other nation. China holds several global records, frequently surpassing its own achievements including the highest rail trestle, longest bridge and many more titles. The astounding buildings have reduced travel times in some locations, facilitated commercial transactions, and created a sizable portion of the nation's economic output, laying the groundwork at least in theory for decades of future expansion. According to Yan Hishang, director of the National Railway Administration Science, Technology and Regulations Department, China has completed 22,000 kilometers of high-speed railway lines, with more than half of these employing bridges or NRA. The world is now extremely interconnected as a result of the developments in communication and transportation. In a short amount of time, technology can be used and learned. The majority of tools and materials for construction are widely available commercially. Any technique we employ to construct a bridge in one region of the world may be readily replicated in any other region. Therefore, the bridges built in China are not substantially different from those erected in Europe, the United States, or any other country for that matter. Only style and need account for the differences. Currently, steel and concrete are the primary building materials utilized to construct bridges. With cube strength of 40 MPA and 50 MPA, respectively, the most popular types of concrete in China are C40 and C50. Additionally, though less commonly, C60 and C70 have been employed. Weldable steel types Q235 and Q345 have yield strengths of 235 MPA and 345 MPA, respectively, are the most widely used steel types. These materials are equivalent to those used in the majority of other nations. China has established itself as the Silk Road's heir apparent by launching the Belt and Road Plan in 2013. Two-thirds of the world's countries are connected by the project's land and sea routes, which connect about 70 nations. The Silk Road was created by the Han Dynasty more than 2,000 years ago. It was a network of land and sea routes that provide a bridge between the East and the West and turned China into a geo-economic hub. China launched the Belt and Road Program to connect Asia, Africa, and Europe, drawing inspiration from the Silk Road. The Silk Road Economic Belt, which unites East Asia, South Asia, Central Asia, Russia, and Europe, while the Maritime Silk Road links China's coastlands to Europe, is the project's onland network. To avoid curves, huge portions of the route must be suspended over valleys and canyons. How can this be done quickly? There was a requirement for more cutting-edge machinery to speed up the pace of this massive project since more land and water channels were required to complete the Belt and Road Initiative. In order to achieve the goal of creating a sea and land network that connects three continents, Iron Monster and other machinery were created. These innovations are still very significant in the field of building engineering, despite the claims made by critics that this initiative forced Chinese debts on less developed nations, establishing the Chinese world order. The Beijing Wao Joint Machinery Company produces the Shijai Zhuang Railway Institute design SLJ932, which builds lengthy bridges with several spans at a notable rate. The SLJ is a multi-purpose machine that can lift, carry, and position sections of a track while using massive stone blocks to link one pillar to another. The 64 fully revolving wheels separated into four blocks are what allow the bridge girdling machine to move. Each wheel can travel sideways because it's a part of a block of 16 that can rotate entirely. It can travel at a speed of 5 km per hour or 3 miles per hour even when fully loaded, making the process far quicker than the old ones, which required the construction of massive cranes on the ground. The building procedure starts as the beams are transported from the very edge of the bridge to the installation location where they will be linked to a predefined pillar. When the second pillar is reached, 
The machine is extended to it, anchored to it, and the beam is placed utilizing a pneumatic structure. Even because Iron Monster uses a lot less labor than crane-based bridge construction, staff is still needed to oversee the entire operation in addition to cleaning and maintaining its numerous components. The crew's work begins as soon as the machine sets the segment, and the process is repeated until the bridge is finished. Due to the machine's efficient use of labor, lack of the need for pricey scaffolding and faster project completion, it has proven effective especially in larger building projects like the Belt and Road. A surprising added feature that increases the safety of the bridges built using the equipment is that its 640-ton weight forces them to support greater weight than they were designed to. Unfortunately, the resources and technology required to construct these machines should be redone every four years because they only have a lifespan of roughly four years and can lay only 700 to 1,000 bridge spans, or the distance between two intermediate supports for a bridge. China has just started producing its own tunnel boring machines or TBM under license, replacing the necessity for foreign fabrication of the equipment required for the Suai Highway project. This 15.3 meter slurry TBM is the end result, and it was launched in October 2017 by the China Railway Engineering Equipment Group company with assistance from independent German engineers. It has a massive rotating disc up front that can cut through rock and dirt. Its 100 meter of trailing infrastructure, which weighs 4,000 tons, allows for the installation of the tunnel walls as the cutting head advances slowly under the power of hydraulic ramps. Similar to other slurry machines, the chamber in which the cutting head debris is mixed with a clay solution called bentonite before being pumped out via pipes, and concrete rings are installed to secure the tunnel walls. When it was finished in May 2017, the Mombasa-Nairobi Railway in Kenya attracted interest from all over the world, not least because it was 18 months ahead of schedule. The 480-kilometer railway in Kenya's first new route since the country's independence. It is the first railway built outside of China using Chinese construction standards and equipment with 90% of its funding coming from China's Exim Bank. Look no further than the equipment that lay the tracks to comprehend how the railway was constructed at a rate of 700 meters per day. The track layer moves prefabricated lengths of track along a railway line, lay one down and then moves the next length along the newly laid track. Once these sections of track are installed, the short rails that are attached to each one is removed and replaced with longer rails, which will provide a smoother ride for the route's trains. Each segment of the track only needs to be installed for four minutes. These robots, nevertheless, demand a significant amount of labor despite their technical prowess. Chinese engineers oversee local employees as they labor to build sections of track in makeshift factories along the railway's path. The track portion must next be painstakingly fastened in the ideal location with a margin of error of less than two centimeters. Through security is under question. On-site mishaps are frequent. A top Chinese engineer who was working on the Mombasa-Nairobi line told Xinhua News Agency last year. For the time being, though, a million or so travelers have used the route, which reduces the traditional British colonial route's travel time for more than 10 hours to just under four. Thanks to a second $1.5 billion loan from China's Exim Bank, the construction has already started to extend the line farthest west into Kisumu. It'll eventually connect Ethiopia, South Sudan, Uganda, and Rwanda. If all goes according to plan, considering the pace at which these mega machines can build, it won't be long until Kenya is at the center of an East African rail network financed by China. No wonder, China has started its next mega project. Have you heard of their third generation bridge project? To advance Chinese bridge engineering toward the third generation bridge project, which is characterized by the intelligent bridge, China will direct the integrated development of intelligent technology, an industrialization system, and a specialized bridge engineering platform. This change will represent a significant advancement for the growth of the bridge business. Let's wait and see what they are up to. And that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos.